This program is brought to you by the Reeves Law Firm, www.reevesfirm.com. In, 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 in the know. Good evening, everyone. In the know. Tony Reeves. Tony Reeves. Tony Reeves. Tony Reeves. Fire. Following the news in any way, shape, or form. No shortage of things to talk about. What did we do? What will it bring? Is this a reality we simply have to accept? Go ahead and get started. So what you have as a situation is you're waiting for your back pay and you're frustrated, you're upset, you're mad because you're trying to figure out, um, for whatever reason, excuse me here, make sure I take this down, why is there a delay in you getting your benefits? And a lot of times people ask questions and they don't seem to understand. So I wanted to take the time to go through a few things about what happens when you find out that you are... um, there's a delay in your benefits and you're trying to figure out what's the deal. Most people, when they call me, when they've gotten approved and I tell them it's going to take about 60 to 90 days, they get all torn up in knots because, you know, they've been waiting for a couple of years now. And now they got somebody, some, somebody telling them it's going to take them another two to three months to get their money. What is really going on? Well, here's the problem that most people don't understand. And this is something I have to admit that I don't understand sometimes as well is we don't really understand the back office logistics of getting you paid. Let's just call it like it is. When you hire a representative, you don't hire a representative to go in there to monitor them and manage and make sure all your money gets calculated properly. That's not what we're here to do. Our responsibility is to get you on the benefits and then Social Security takes over in terms of paying you. Well, what gets frustrating for most people, give me, hold on, make sure I turn this down, What gets frustrating for most people is they don't understand what happens behind the scenes that may cause a delay in their benefits. So let's kind of go through a few things. First of all, a couple things you need to realize. The way you get paid is primarily done through an automated system. Normally. Now that's why I always tell people normal is a relative term. Normal is a situation where there's no particular difficulties or hangups or anything like that. Normally it should not take a long time. What do I mean by that? Well, it's a relative. It could take a couple of weeks, a couple of days. It just really depends. But sometimes what happens is that things occur in your file that causes a delay. Now, most of you are like, why didn't I find this? Let's pu- I want you to think about this for a second. I want you to listen. The reason why Social Security doesn't bring those things to your attention at the very, very beginning is because guess what? At the very, very beginning, you weren't getting paid. So it doesn't make sense for them to tell you about what you need to do and you're not even in pay status yet. So once you get into pay status, all these other things kick in. And you're probably saying to yourself, well, if I'd have known this along the way, I said, I'm going to say again, if you don't know if you're going to prove, why would they need, they have no obligation to have to tell you all that. You understand what I'm saying? It's almost like saying, well, you know, I want to buy that house when I win the lottery. Okay, well, when you win the lottery, you come talk to me about buying the house. And it's like, well, what about, well, why did you tell me about all these, uh, and this, and some of you are going to be like, dang, Attorney Reeves, you're being really snotty. It's not snotty. It's most people don't understand and appreciate. The Social Security process is long. There are thousands, maybe millions of people who apply. As a result of this, they have to take things as those situations present themselves. That's important for you to understand so that you're not around here getting mad because you feel like they're withholding information. They're not withholding anything. The reality is, let me stress this again, the reality is, is that these things don't kick in until you are actually in pay status. So let's kind of go through these things accordingly. There are two ways they take care of your pay, either manually or through automated system. Let me say this again. It's either done manually or through automated system. Automated system basically means when they put in the information, it calculates the information accordingly and boom, you get your pay. Manual means that The system doesn't automatically do the calculations based on the information. That means the person inputting the information has to do it manually. Now you would say, well, what's the difference? I think about it. If they're doing it automated, they can type the information in the system. The system will do the calculations, uh, compute the necessary information, and release, basically with a couple of buttons, boom, release that information accordingly. Beautiful. If it goes to manual, that means all those little things, the steps that the automated system normally would do, it does not do anymore. That means why? Because 
Somebody has to manually do them themselves. So you ask yourself, well, when do those situations pop up? All right, let's kind of go down the line. First, first, if you have SSI only, if you're SSI only, you have to do what's called a PERC interview or a resource interview. That is for Social Security to determine based on your finances for the period of time you were found to be disabled and they have to be for every month, what monies and assets that you had coming in during that time period. Now, some people are so quick to say, I have no money, man, so it shouldn't be a problem. What about those months when people lent you money? How about the months when you stayed at maybe one person's house and then maybe you were homeless? How about the time when you went and worked part-time and you made a few dollars for those months? How about the time when somebody lent you a couple of hundred dollars from periods of time as well? And you're like, well, okay. Guess what? Social Security needs that information. So until they have that information, they're not going to calculate your benefits because they can't do it properly or accurately unless they have that information. And until you do that interview, until you have that quote unquote perk interview, until that occurs, you might as well hang it up because they're not going to give you, release you any monthly money or even back pay until they get that done. So that's one thing. Second of all, this I'm going through a list, and this is not the entire list, but a few things you need to be aware of. Fee petition. Most of you are probably like, I don't understand where, where does fee petition cases pop up? Fee petitions pop up if it's a remand or if there's more than one attorney or representative involved in the case. If there is a fee petition, some offices will freeze your back pay. And you're like, why do they got to freeze it? Because they want to make sure that the representative gets paid for the work they did. So there may be, a, they're, they're probably not going to release all that back pay to you, even though they probably earmarked a certain amount of money aside for the attorney. They want to make sure that the rep gets paid first. Now I'm saying, this is not every office that does this, but some offices they do. They are probably going to put the money and they're going to hold it because they want to make sure that that money is available. So what does that mean for you for your back pay? Well, until the fee authorization has been received by the, the Social Security Administration. That means what happens is this. You win the case, the attorney has to petition the court, a representative has to petition the court for the money for the work that they did. At that particular point, they have to actually file a brief with the court. They have to give an itemization of all the work that they've done. They have to give you the opportunity to give a comment about whether you think that's how much money they should receive. Then the court has to issue a decision as to how much money that a representative should receive. They send that to the Social Security office. The Social Security office releases the money. Then you get your back pay. You're like, well, God, well, how long can that take? It really just depends. I can tell you right now, I've got a case, literally, two cases like this where one where uh, the claimant, my client got paid, uh, won their case in May, I have another one, the client won their case in July. And under both of those situations, I only just recently got the award notice. I mean, only recently got an authorization from the court. And you're like, wow, so that means you could be three to four or five months before I get my back paid? Very possibly. It's very possible. So keep that in the back of your mind. If your back pay is over $25,000, more than likely, they need two signatures to authorize it. Those are checks and balances to make sure you have not been released more money than you were supposed to receive. And as a result, they can make sure that the calculations are done properly. If your retroactive back pay is more than $50,000, okay? $50,000, it's something. We'll take three. You're like, good Lord. Listen, trust me. When they're looking at back pay amounts of that size, they want to make sure they get it right. Let me say this again. When they're looking at retroactive benefits for you of that size, Social Security wants to make sure they get it right. So let me, let me stress this again when I say this to you. Social Security, when they're trying to determine um, you know, releasing your back pay, that's another thing that comes up. So if there's more than $25,000, it may take a little bit to release your back pay. If it's over 50000 it may take three signatures. Offsets. If there is something that you received that impacts your benefits, maybe your SSI benefits are reduced because you worked for a few months. Maybe your Social Security Disability Insurance benefits is reduced because you got workers' comp benefits. They need to take those offsets into consideration, so they need the documentation in order to calculate those, which, which causes me to jump to the other two areas. Documentation. If there is some documentation that they need in order to calculate what you're entitled to receive, a 
they're not going to release anything back to you until they get it. I'm just, I can't even say it any clearer than that. If there is any documents that they need to support whatever you're saying in terms of monies you've received and things of that nature, they will not release your back pay unless they have those documentations. And I know you're like, well, I forgot. listen, the sooner you get it to them, you can sit there and huff and puff all you want to, but the sooner you get them that information, the sooner they can get it out. And I see some friend of mine. Make sure of this. Ha. Uh, sorry, I had a guest. Oh, and I missed it. There you go. All right. Joy and pleasure. All right. So, take it down a little bit of notch here. When you get paid your retroactive back pay, most people don't realize that there are two locations that handle that for you, depending on what the benefits are. If it's supplemental security income benefits, that is handled by the local office. If it's handled, if you're getting paid disability or SSD, disability insurance benefits, that is taken care of at a payment center. And the payment centers are typically assigned based on how old you are, whether you're over the age of 54, 55 and older, or under the age of 54, and the geographic region that you are in based on your social security number. So keep that in the back of your mind. Other things that you need to keep in mind. If you have more than one rep in your case, more than one representative, goes back to the fee petition thing. There may call, Social Security may hold your retro until all the reps are taken care of in terms of pay. So what does that mean? Well, if you got two or three representatives and they're all doing fee petitions and they're all going to the same judge, the judge has to issue uh, authorizations for all those representatives and then Social Security has to wait for them all to come in. So guess what? The rep like for instance, I had a case like that. I was the primary rep by the time the claimant came to me, but there were two other reps on the case. Everybody did a fee petition. Guess what? I did mine first. Why? Because I had access to the information first because I was the current rep. The other ones had to still be notified by the Social Security office that the case had been approved, be notified of the award notice, and then they had to put their fee petition in and so forth. By the time everything was done, it was almost half a year later before all the reps were paid, then the client got their back pay. And they were hot. And I told them, I said, it, I know you don't want to hear this, but the reality is, is that they have to do it like that because... What happens if they release the money and they determine that there was some money that was supposed to go to the representatives that they didn't get? Got to come back and take it from you. And I know you don't want that. All right. Ah, keep in mind a couple of things that you need to be aware of. Workers at the payment center and workers at the local office. So let's start with the local office. This is one of the things that I tell people. When the local office is handling calculating your back pay, these people are wearing multiple hats. They are working the front window. They're working the phones. They're handling interviews and appointments. And they're working on files like calculating your back pay. So when you're multitasking like that, it's not like they just come in today and say, oh, Mr. Reed, we're just going to spend the whole day working on his case. No, it doesn't happen like that. They get sidetracked, they got a lot of messages, they have a lot of things that are going on, so they do it when they can. So guess what? When you have that many tasks that individuals are responsible, and may I also indicate that in most cases, a lot of these offices are understaffed. So that means they're wearing so many hats and they don't have all the people that they possibly need. So as a result of having all these different hats and needing to do all these things, they are scrambling. Okay? so. Keep that in mind when you're sitting here getting frustrated because you can't figure out why you haven't been paid yet. Also, payment centers, same thing. Remember, these people are handling pay for people all over the country. So guess what? They're going to get tied down. They're going to be stressed. It's going to be a pain in the backside. So do not, I repeat, do not get bit out of shape when you find yourself in a situation where you can't understand what in the heck is taking them so long to respond. Now, Ah, here's something that you also need to be aware of. If SSI is being paid, it's handled in one office. If it's SSD, it's handled in another office. If it's concurrent, meaning you apply and you're eligible to receive both, the two offices have to talk to each other to make sure that they don't bump heads with each other in terms of the pay and overpay you. So guess what ends up happening? The local office has to provide certain information to the payment center. The payment center has to provide certain information to the local office. They have to talk to each other 
And if they don't talk to each other, they risk the possibility of paying you too much. And a lot of times, they're going to make sure they talk to each other first before you get your money. So it's important for you to remember that. Now, rep payee. If Social Security or a judge or whatever the case may be makes a determination that you need to have someone handle your money. Let me say this once again. If Social Security determines that you need to have someone handle your money, Social Security will not release one dime to you of your back pay until the determination has been made regarding that. Meaning someone, typically in the local office, has to input information that makes it a definitive determination of do they believe you can handle your own money. If they don't think you can, they're not going to release it until you give them a representative payee. Someone who can handle your money on your behalf. Can't say it any more clearer than that. So if you see a representative payee and you're getting all mad because you haven't gotten your money yet, I'm going to ask that hardcore question. Have they done a determination of whether you need a representative payee yet? If the answer is no, that means you're going to have to wait, you know, stand fast, wait one until they get that taken care of. All right. Installments versus lump sum. As you probably know, for Social Security Disability Benefits, SSD, you typically get your back pay as one lump sum. SSI, if it's a big amount, they typically give that to you in six months installments. Remember, if there's any issues, we talked about workers' comp, I mean, SSI with regards to working and all that stuff. If there's any additional issues, which to, this is what happens with SSD case, this, they're going to wait. What do you mean by issues? If you owe federal taxes, child support, alimony, if you have one of those things that offset, if you have non-service connected disability benefits from the VA, if you've got workers' comp benefits, if there's any type of impact as a result of an offset, on a situation like that, guess what? I hate to be the bearer of bad news, that's gonna cause a delay in your back pay, okay? Another thing, hear me when I say this, do not take this the wrong way. It's gonna come off sound, it's gonna come off sound crazy, but follow me. Because I don't wanna disparage anyone, so I'm gonna say this as nice as I can and as bluntly as I can. The toll-free number does nothing for you. Hey, there, I put it out there. The toll-free is an awesome resource, but when you get paid, the people who can give you specific information is the local office for your SSI and the payment center for your SSD. Calling the toll-free number will do nothing but make you mad. I'm just, I'm just gonna put it out there, okay? You're gonna call them and they're gonna give you some answer and they're gonna make you hotter than fish grease because if, they're, because if the local office is doing something manual, the person assigned to your case knows specifically what they need in order to move your benefits forward. If the case is the payment center, they can tell the person who's assigned to it, the claims authorizer authorizer that's assigned to it, can tell you exactly what they need. If you call the toll-free number, you risk making yourself mad. I'm not telling you not to call them. I'm just saying don't get mad when you do, because you're gonna get mad. Now if you are trying to find out the status, there's a couple ways you can do it. You can write a letter. Not going to do that. You can wait. Probably not going to do that because you're impatient. You're going to call. Going to make you mad. Your best bet, if you really want to know exactly what's going on, is to get up in the morning, go to the local office, come in and tell them that you're just call, you just come in there to check on the status of your case. Uh, in terms of finding out if there's anything additional Social Security needs. And then sit in the lobby. Take a magazine. Take a cell phone. Take an iPad or a tab tablet or whatever with you. Be, you know, get a mag do whatever you need to because you're going to be there for a while. But when I tell you this is the most important thing in the world because if you leave a message, you're going to get mad if you don't get a call back. If you call and you speak to someone and they tell you something different from what the other person talked to you, you're going to get angry. But if you go down and you sit down and you talk with Social Security representative, they will give you the, the, the long and the skinny of what is going on with your case. Trust me, these people are consummate professionals. They're not looking to give you a hard time, but they can give you some deep insight into what it is that may be causing a delay. People, for those of you who are going through the Social Security process, be advised. I hate, well, let me rephrase that because if you have an attorney, let them advise you. 
not be advised. Here's some, here's some general legal information and some tips that you need to be aware of. The reality is this. Everybody's case is different. Okay? Everybody's case is different. The, the unfortunate part is that when you get approved, they don't just flip on a switch and you get your back pay right away. They have to make sure, they being Social Security, has to take every effort to make sure that the calculations are done properly. Because you don't want to be in a situation where they end up paying you more money than you should have received. If you have any other questions, as always, check me out. As you know, we're trying something new now. Usually I do this video as the first Wednesday of every month. Well, I'm trying to do it every second, every first and third Wednesday. So our next video will be on the 2nd of November. I hope this video was helpful to you. Um, just to give you a heads up, I actually have a hearing that date, so I may be doing this video remotely. And as a matter of fact, I might even be broadcasting just from Facebook Live, but we'll work, we'll, we'll work out the details. Don't worry. Get your questions in. If you have any more, let me know. I'm here for you. This is Anthony Reeves. This is your Disability Talk Live, and I hope...